In this video, I'll be working with some stabilized carbon fiber fabrics. So the goal with the stabilization is to have a fabric that is easier to work with, that doesn't fray or deform as much while you're cutting and placing the pieces. So I have two commercially available options, which are Pro Finish and Weblock, and then I'm going to compare that to an application of spray adhesive and see what sort of results we can get from each of those options. I've created a template as a guide for which direction that the pattern needs to go, so we end up with those concentric squares. Now the first one is the Pro Finish. You can see the texture there, that is the binding material that's sort of sprayed on, like a spatter effect. And that's only on the one side. The other side is, of course, just a perfectly even weave. A rotary cutter is a great way to get this cleanly cut without causing any damage or distortion to the fabric. Just using that template as a guide, we need to go ahead and cut four of these triangles, ensuring that the pattern is going in the correct direction for each one. The weave was nice and straight on this in both directions, both the warp and the weft, so it was easy to get a clean line on that, so these are lining up quite well. However, there were some areas where the pattern wasn't aligned, just based on the placement of the template, so I just had a couple of areas where I needed to trim down a bit so that we end up with the same pattern at the tip of each of these pieces. When cutting such a small amount, you do still end up with quite a few loose fibers, despite that stabilizing binder in there. So you just have to clean that up afterwards, otherwise all of those bits are going to get everywhere. You don't want to breathe that, you don't want that to be getting mixed in with your carbon fiber final pieces, because that is going to end up showing on the final piece if there are lumps of stray fibers. So that's all pretty well aligned, time to move on to the next fabric and complete the same process. So this is the Weblock stabilized version. So this is Composite Envision's proprietary method for doing this, so they can apply this to a variety of fabrics. So there is some versatility there, which is nice, and it is aptly named. You can see these sort of fibrous looking patterns over that, and it is flat to the touch, but it does bind all of those pieces to each other. So I'm following the same process. I did notice on this one, this particular carbon fiber that the weblock was applied to, the weft wasn't quite as straight. There was a slight curve to it in some areas. So I got the best cuts that I could and then cleaned those up after the fact. And I don't think that was due to the weblock. It was just this particular carbon fiber weave wasn't quite as perfect as the previous one. And that's not a big deal if you're doing something less precise than this, but that's the goal of this test is because it is so precise that it really is a good test for seeing all of the potential pitfalls or the positive aspects of each of these varieties. So again, once the base pieces are cut, simply lay them next to each other and to determine which areas need to be trimmed to make sure that the pattern does align on each of the pieces. Clean up any of that dust that's left from cutting off those small slivers. Here's an example of where one of the individual toes, you can see that it's not quite straight, has a slight curve to it. Even when it's aligned with the straight edge, it does stick out a little bit at the top, so you have to kind of try to finagle the fabric just enough to be able to get a straight cut there. You wouldn't notice this if you weren't trying to cut a perfectly straight line and have these aligned, so it's not really too big of a deal. And in this case, I was able to work with it and end up with these aligning pretty well. So test number three. So for this, I have just a piece of plain carbon fiber. There is as yet no stabilization treatment on it. I have cut out a large piece and just taped the edges as usual because otherwise this is going to be fraying all over the place. So I'm going to get the fabric as neat as possible because we obviously don't want something locked into a non-ideal position. So get it as straight as you can and then I'm just spraying this over with an even coat of spray adhesive. And this does, of course, need to dry for a while, so I've left it for probably about an hour until it was no longer particularly tacky. So you can see the spray adhesive on that back surface now, just a light coating. So now I can remove those tape edges, 
once I placed the straight edge on there, I noticed that it still wasn't completely straight even from my original session of trying to get it straight before adding the glue, but again, it's not too big of a deal. I'm just getting it as straight as possible and then we'll fine tune that in the placement stage. There is still some tack to the glue, even after drying for a while, but it's not a sort of tackiness that sticks to other things. It just kind of peels right off, not leaving any residue, so that's fine. Also, the off cuts on this are pretty decent. They're staying together pretty well, so I think that is, like the other Weblock and Pro Finish versions, going to help make sure that scraps can be used for other things without them just falling apart while they're in storage. So with all my four pieces, I'm just checking the alignment, and then I've got to trim this as well as I can to get this pattern pretty well lined up. Get rid of any dust that's on there from those fine cuts. Before we jump into applying the resin to these, there is one other feature that the Pro Finish advertises, which is that it can be heat molded so that you have sort of a preformed shape and it's easier to lay up once you go to actually resin the pieces in place. So I have tested it here, just using the heat gun and pressing it into this mold to see how that feature might work just with a small scrap. I might give a little bit of an idea. So it does take the shape and it seems to hold it pretty well. It has a pretty good pop when you press in this indentation and then it just pops back into place the other direction so that's pretty decent and actually this part that I'm using for the molding test that was created from the pro finish so let's just try that same thing using the web lock now it doesn't advertise that this is supposed to work but just for comparison purposes it's interesting to try so I use the heat gun to heat up the fabric and press it into place and it does seem to have taken the shape somewhat it doesn't feel as sturdy though it feels like it can be just kind of pressed back out fairly easily. And then just for comparison purposes, we're going to try the same thing with the spray adhesive version, heating it up, pressing it into the mold, and see what that might do. And it did take the shape somewhat, but this isn't very well held in place. You can flatten this back out fairly easily. But it does hold the shape to some extent, so they all can be somewhat preformed, but the Pro Finish provides a more sturdy locking in of that shape. Alright, so back to all of those triangles that were cut out earlier. I've mixed up a batch of resin, and I'm going to go ahead and just place that in the vacuum chamber for a bit just to get rid of some of those bubbles. So we'll start off as bubble free as possible. Once the resin's degassed, we can start spreading this onto the mylar. With each piece, I'm removing the stray fibers from the front side and just trying to ensure it's as clean as possible for the layup. Also, any small strings on the sides, those need to be trimmed away with scissors. Pro finish laid down pretty easily here. Everything lined up well. There are, of course, still some areas where it starts to fray just a little bit. It's not a perfect locking in of the fibers, but it is holding together pretty well. And I'm pressing them against each other to make sure that that seam line doesn't have a gap there as much as possible. And then I'm just going to spread the resin over everything, get that all wetted out. And I thought that it would be more of a problem at those edges. I was thinking that the brush might cause that to fray more, but actually it really wasn't a problem. Those were staying in place quite well, so I didn't have to be too careful with that. Next up, we've got that web lock. We're gonna go through the same process, just cleaning the front side to remove fibers as much as possible trimming away any strings that have just come loose while they were sitting there waiting to be laminated, and then pressing the parts against each other to eliminate any gap in the seam. And 
the edges were not quite as straight on this because I did have to account for that slight curve in the actual weave. But at this stage, I was able to just kind of stretch it slightly and eliminate the gap that way. So it was not a problem in the end. I'm gonna go ahead and saturate this one also with the resin. And the third piece of the experiment is that spray adhesive stabilized version. So there are some pieces of this starting to want to fall out, but at this point I don't want to just pull them out because then I'm going to have issues with my pattern. So I'm just kind of trying to keep it as together as possible. It's not terrible, but you can definitely notice the difference between this version and the other two. I still was able to get these laid into place pretty well. And then just wet those out with the resin. I would say it was certainly better than trying to do this with a completely unstabilized piece of fabric. This would have been falling apart completely. So the spray adhesive is certainly adding some amount of stabilization. It's just not as effective as the Pro Finish or the Weblock. So here's all three of those just placed and saturated with the resin. So you can see some edges are starting to get a little bit less than neat on the spray adhesive version, but overall everything's looking pretty good. So I'm going to add the backing fabric just so we don't have any weak spots at those seam lines. I don't want this to break apart. So I've added a just a solid piece of the carbon fiber fabric and then just wet that out also with the rest of the resin. Got a piece of peel ply on the back because this is going to go into the vacuum bag. And I'm labeling these because they are starting to look very similar and I don't want to lose track of these results if they do end up being anywhere close to indistinguishable. So this then gets some breather cloth on top, pop it into the vacuum bag and let that cure for 24 hours under vacuum. So these are all cured now. We're going to just peel them off the mylar and see what we have. So the pro finish, it's looking pretty nice. Those lines are clean. I'm not seeing any major defects here. Number two, the weblock version. Again, this is looking quite nice. There are some stray fibers that got into the mix, so that's definitely one of the main things to watch out for if you're doing something detailed like this, is to just keep track of those fibers and carefully clean each piece before placing it. But they're both looking pretty good, so let's check out this third one and see how the spray adhesive version compares. And again, this is looking acceptable. Now you can see on that one piece where the toe was starting to separate from the rest of the fabric and we just kind of had to tuck that back in. It's not perfect. There are some more distortions there, but it is still better than it would have been trying to do this with a completely unstabilized fabric. So it's not quite on par with the commercially available options. So in conclusion, the Pro Finish and the Weblock both did a great job of making the fabric easier to work with and improving the final result. The spray adhesive was not on par with the commercially available options, but it did provide some improvement over no stabilization at all, so that may be a good option for something that's a less demanding application.